Hi everyone, welcome to Dutch Shell Collectibles. Here today at the Railway Museum in York. Yes, although I am here in York, uh, the uh, video of the museum is for another day. Uh, this video is actually about another set of A4s. So you may have seen my video recently of the two A4s by Backman uh, from The Great Goodbye. Well, Hornby did a similar set. So today's video is about the Hornby set of three A4s, Sir Ralph Wedgwood. So I came all the way to the railway museum to film an opening by this plaque, only to find a sort of construction wall and a bit of tape over it, which is a bit disappointing. But basically the plaque commemorates an air raid on the 28th and 29th of April 1942, where the A4, Sir Ralph Wedgwood, was uh, destroyed. And if I just come over here, there's actually a picture. If I just zoom in on here, you can see the loco just over the back there and just make out the name. And it was on this spot. So the plaque here was put here by the uh, Gresley Society on the 50th anniversary of the rage. So that was the 29th of April 1992. So anyway, with that said, let's go and have a look at the box. So I'm back from York, in uh, back in the workshop, and it's a very cold workshop. Um, and this is the set in question. It's the Hornby Railway's triple set of Sir Ralph Wedgwood, three A4s in here. Now before I open this box, let's just do a quick recap. So a week or so ago, I put a video up looking at a Backman set that I bought 10 years ago. And I bought that at uh, the Great Goodbye event, which was um, part of the Great Gathering, um, where the remaining six A4s were all brought together by the National Railway Museum. And I went up to see the very last part of that event and got caught in the moment and bought this Backman set of the two visiting locos, the Dwight D. Eisenhower and the Dominion of Canada. And they've sat on the shelf for 10 years. I decided to do a review on the 10th anniversary. And when I opened the models, both models were, ver well, they're absolutely identical. Um, the only difference was the numbers and names on them. And I felt that was a little bit wrong. There could have been a little bit of effort in there, especially as, you know, Dominion of Canada has had different chimneys and a bell fitted and all that kind of thing. And as people have pointed out in the comments, one of the locos should have a corridor tender and the other one shouldn't. And they both had a corridor uh, tender. But the video itself has been absolutely amazing. I can't believe how many people have watched it. So first of all, thank you to the 9,000 odd people that have watched it. A big thank you to the 200 odd people that have given it a thumbs up. And a really, really big thank you to everybody who commented on it and shared their thoughts and feelings about it. It occurred to me I was a bit hard on Backman, so let's see how Hornby do with a similar sort of uh, exercise. Now, the one thing I will say, the Backman set that I bought was 10 years old. This set was released in 1994, so this is 30 years old. So it's, it's a much older uh, set. But if I just, uh, I'll just move this forward so I can open the lid. And you see what we have in here. Set of certificates, one for each of the locos. And this beautifully laid out set of three locos. And immediately what's evident is all three of them are very different uh, mouldings. So obviously the one at the top here has the, um, the fairing on there. We've got a single chimney, a single chimney, a double chimney, and obviously with the different liveries picked out, they look particularly nice. So let's start from the top. So this uh, top one here is Sir Ralph Wedgwood, the loco from 1939 to 1942, and carries the number 4469, as you can see. So originally this was named Glad Gladwell, sorry, Gladwell, and a year after it came into service, uh, the name was changed as the chief general manager of the LNER retired and they renamed it after him obviously Sir Ralph Wedgwood. I'll just lift this to one side you see this lovely tender and you can see on the tender here the chrome stripping and the chrome handles have all been put on there and a beautifully interior on the loco very very nice model and the one thing I will say these are tender driven which uh, I'm not a big fan of, so but we'll see how we go. Hopefully they won't be too bad. Right, so that's the first one. So as you saw at the beginning of the video, I was standing by a plaque in the National Railway Museum, and that was the spot that the Sir Ralph Wedgwood, this original 4469, was destroyed during an air raid in the Second World War, and that was within a month of it being painted into wartime black. So the LNER did decide to reinstate the name Sir Ralph Wedgwood and they selected uh, this loco 4466 which was Herringull to be renamed again after the uh, retiring general manager of the LNER. So here we can see the loco represented in wartime black between the years 1944 to 1947. And you see the NE on the tender there. Again similar detail inside the, the cab and uh, tender driven loco. Put that 
to one side. And then final, the final loco represents Sir Ralph Wedgwood between the years of 1962 and 1965, carrying its BR number on the side there, 60006. And this is the livery that it ran right until it was taken out of service in 1965. The other thing to point out on here is obviously at this point it was fitted with a double chimney. The chimney was fitted in 1957. So that's the loco here and you can see the mainline running stickers on the side. Same cab inside there, very nicely done, lots of pipe work and again a tender driven loco as you'd expect. Right, let me just move the box out of the way. So I mentioned this set came out in 1994 and if you wanted to buy all of these or indeed one of these this is how it would be presented to you this is one of the original boxes from the three locos so uh, you get this limited edition Sir Ralph Wedgwood box um, it says inside limited to a production run of 3,000 models of each of the three locos and what I found quite interesting is on the end here it has a price tag from Beatty's of £27.56 which uh, Quite amazing, really, when you think that, you know, 30 years ago, it's £27 for a new loco. So I'm just going to have a quick look in here, because we do have the, the original service sheet. Right, so this is the service sheet. Gives you operation and maintenance. And I will oil these in a minute. I'll do that on camera, because a lot of people pointed out that the Backman locos, I took them straight out of the box and ran them without giving them a service. So I will service these before we uh, get them get them running. Talks about the Wingfield motors and how to service those and uh, different bits on coupling there. And so as I said, these do come with each with a certificate signed by Simon Kohler. So we've got uh, at the top there, 39 to 42. Then let me get this around the right way, 44 to 47. And then at the bottom here, 62 to 65. And I understand it that this was, like I say, there was 3,000 of each of these, but this was the first time that Hornby had done a complete set of locos and supplied a, uh, a nice wooden box to go with them. So let's have a quick talk through the locos. So starting with the one at the top here, got lovely fitted handrails down the side. Now, unlike the Batman ones, these are very straight. The Batman ones were all over the place, bent all over the place. We've obviously got the red trimmed wheels on there. We've got the uh, fairings fitted, which is obviously a difference to the molding. Inside the cab, lovely detail in there with this sort of separately fitted metal parts in there. One thing I will point out is over time, the glass has got a little bit misty on these, which is a shame, particularly on the wartime black model. You can see, if I just lift that up, you can hopefully you can pick that up on the camera. It's just, uh, you know, with age, it's, the plastic's gone off a little bit. So this one you can see fitted with the single chimney on there as well. Obviously no sprung buffers, but you can see the number printed on the front, which is quite a nice touch. And then on the tender, a little bit of detail in here, not picked out as uh, with paint or anything. And obviously with a Ringfield motor in, uh, in the back here, so these are tender driven, picking up through this contact on in between. And you'll see that this does have the, the sprung coupling that... Uh, was a, all the rage at that point in time so when these are together obviously you know you've got a little bit of compliance in there and just one thing on the tender that uh, I think I mentioned a minute ago when these uh, original locos came out in garter blue they uh, had stainless steel lettering on the side of the tender and a stainless steel flashing and that has been depicted on these uh, models in uh, in uh, paint on the Hornby model there Moving on to the wartime black, obviously we've lost the fendering down the side here, so all the mechanism is accessible and visible. Um, still with a single chimney on there, much of the other details remain the same. Got a nice, still a nice detailed cab on the side. But then on the tender, the latter war years where the LNER turned into NE on these uh, wartime black locos, you can see this here. Again mentioning the number change as this was the renumbered herring goal and you can see that the works plates are now on the side of the cab there. So tiny little subtle details and I mean obviously the changing colour of the wheels there. And then finally onto the Briar loco. We've got the double chimney on here. No fairings on the side with the mechanism still visible. And uh, we've lost the numbering off the front here but it's now moved up onto the nameplate which you can see is another difference in the moulding between the two locos and the banding that has been picked out on top 
really really good really you know really crisp painting on there especially for 30 years ago and in some respects much better than the Hornby Double O that I've seen recently I mentioned the seam running down the middle of the boiler and a couple of people pointed out that that's you know was technically correct because that's where the aero casing would meet in the middle well this Hornby Loco has actually got riveting running down the middle makes it a little bit more detailed rather than it just looking like a flash line I mentioned the overhead wires obviously we've then got uh, the same fitted handrails separately fitted on there and the cabs the same and then the tender really really crisp printing on there and uh, nicely finished on the back there right so i'm just going to do one of these on camera just so that uh, people can actually see that uh, i do look after my locos and i'm just going to give this a very tiny light oil just on the motion bit in here that's good and this side tender not going to put too much on here just a tiny tiny bit on the the bearings that'll do well I'm going to finish giving these a quick light oil um, and then we'll take them over and get some detailed shots so we start with the loco in its livery from 1939 to 1942 in March 1938, a new LNER A4 locomotive entered service with the name Gadwell, number 4469. A year later, the chief general manager of the LNER retired, and it was decided to rename Gadwell in his honour. Consequently, on March 3rd, 1939, number 4469 became Sir Ralph Wedgwood. The loco was stored at York North Shed on the night of the 29th of April 1942. It was the night of the Bay Decker raid on York. During the attack, York Station and York North Shed were bombed, and number 4469 and another nearby engine, B16 class number 925, were damaged after a bomb fell through the shed roof and exploded between the two engines. The locomotive was seriously damaged as a result of the explosion but was recovered and towed to Doncaster shortly after. Due to the degree of damage it was considered impractical to rebuild number 4469 and the locomotive was condemned. We move on to the loco from 1944 to 1947. In 1944 the LNER decided to reinstate the name Sir Ralph and selected another A4, Herringol, number 4466 for renaming. Thus, Sir Ralph Wedgwood reappeared, but this time carrying the number 4466. And finally on to 1962 to 1965. In 1948, Sir Ralph Wedgwood, under the BR ownership, was renumbered 60006. By 1951, Sir Ralph had acquired a green livery with a double chimney being fitted in 1957. The loco was finally scrapped on the 31st of October that year. I've just picked this one at random out of the three just to do a little demonstration on the control and do keep in mind this is a, a 30 year old loco it's a little bit sticky that's not too bad at all you know I'm not a massive fan of tender driven locos but uh, quite impressed so far so I think it's safe to say you know, on presentation and attention to detail Hornby has won this hands down with their set of three A4s that are 30 years old compared to the 10 year old Backman set um, performance wise well moving backwards and forwards although obviously I've just oiled these it's a little bit sticky I'll uh, take them over to the other layout and uh, set them running for a while and see how they get on 
a really nice collector set um lovely to see three very distinct locos with different color wheels and fairings and all the other tra differences on there really really nice set i'm not convinced by tender driven locos i don't think i have or have been but it's lovely to see the set running around the layout anyway if you enjoyed the video please do give it a thumbs up please leave your comments let me know what you think of the set i'd be really interested to read those and also if you can subscribe have a look on the channel lots of videos on there and if you want to watch the video on the backman locos that i did a week or so ago i'll put a link in the description as well anyway we're going to leave that this one there so thank you ever so much for watching and i'll catch you on the next one